Once upon a time, extreme sports were a preserve of the brave few. But today, they have become increasingly popular for those seeking an adrenaline rush. Kazela World of Adventures is an adventure park that draws about 500,000 visitors a year for its extreme sports such as safari cord biking, zip lining, and canyon swinging. We caught up with Natasha Mudo, the head of marketing and communications at Kazela, to learn more about this new trend. I was arrived. Oh my gosh, that was one of the best experiences I've had in a long time. I mean, <laughs> riding through this park, just seeing this animal, seeing such beautiful scenery. Wow. Where do most of your visitors come from? Today, the number one market for Mauritius is definitely the French market um, and for Casala as well. And we have got our sister island, Réunion. Uh, they do come to Mauritius twice or thrice a year. And now with the emerging markets like Russia, China and India, we're starting also to see a number of visitors from these countries. We have been seeing a trend where an increasing number of people are coming uh, to Casella for extreme sports. Why would you think that is the case? Because we are the only park in Mauritius that are European certified. Mm -hmm. So safety and security of our visitors, of our staff and of our resident animals is of prime importance for us and obviously when visitors come to the park they're looking for safety but also for this rush of adrenaline <laughs> <laughs> and adventure yes. <laughs> okay. uh, in a nice environment, a nice surrounding. What has Casella done to stay ahead of competition? It's definitely been innovation. Um, every year we have tried to introduce a new activity. Kazala has also put emphasis on the training of its staff and uh, we, we, we try to really uh, be a, a number one in the Indian Ocean as well. What are the challenges that you have encountered uh, here at the park? Well, the biggest challenge is the rainy season. We've seen that um, the beginning of the year has brought us lots of rain. And this is a major challenge because we've had instances where we've, we've had to close the park for several days. Mm -hmm. So this demands uh, great management for the animals because they have to be kept in the enclosure. But also the park has been closed and, and this is, has certainly been a lack of revenue for us. I don't think I've been cl this close to an ostrich before, so <laughs> <laughs> we're going to let these ostriches be and just give them their time to eat. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you. Tourism is the backbone of the Mauritian economy. In 2017, Mauritius attracted over 1.34 million tourists, surpassing its own population size of 1.3 million people for the first time. This contributed $983 million to the country's GDP in 2017, a figure that was expected to grow by 1.6% in 2018. Mauritius is projected to receive 1.45 million tourists in 2019, which will translate in earnings of about $2 billion, according to the Bank of Mauritius. Prakash Isram is an official tour guide at Tamarind Falls, a popular hiking destination for extreme sports enthusiasts. Over 10 years ago, he left his stable job as a cruise ship captain to seize the opportunities available in adventure tourism. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good? Yes, you right? yes, you? You are ready? I'm so ready. I've been looking forward to this. I can't wait to get myself That's good. there. That's good. Let me grab you. my bag. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
what uh, measures have the government put in place to create a conducive environment for you to do business here? We are pushing the tourism authority to, for example, put a sign here and help us with some bean, okay? And uh, let the people know that when you hike in this forest, you need to have a guide. And maybe an official guide also will be recommended because you have so many different types of guide which is not official. And now from the government, we hold the license just to make sure that the guest is in a proper hand. So where do you source your clients from? Okay, normally I get my clients from taxi, I get my clients from two operators, and some guests contact me directly. And then if the guest is happy with my service, and they write it on TripAdvisor, and then from TripAdvisor, guest is searching what they can do, and they see me on this on TripAdvisor, because the guest put my name and my number also, then they contact me. So on a good month, how many people do you cater to? Depends on the season also. If it is summer, then you can work five to six days in a week. But in winter, you might work for 10 or 12 days in a month. That's the problem. Atanas, Hi. the man who will upsell you. Hi okay. Atanas, how are Hi. you? Nice Hello. to meet you. So Hi. we have uh, Wendy uh -huh. and Adele with us to help us to go down. The waterfall that we will go, oh. go down. Nice, okay. nice. Okay. Have fun, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. How would you describe business uh, for you since you started? How is the turnover like? Since we start, so we have low season and high season. But we notice also that uh, when the peak season, like for tourism in Mauritius, we are a little bit low for us. And when there is low season for hotel, we are in high season. How much does it cost per person to go down these waterfalls? So this depends on the trip that we do. So mostly we do the half day, which costs around 70 dollars per person. But uh, it's depend also on the amount of people that we have in the group. If it is a big group, we have some reduction about like 10 to 15 person for the group. So you say $70 per person, right? And in a good month, how many clients do you handle? 15 to 20 outing, depending on a uh, number of people which can buy between uh, 2 to 10 people. Now, I can see this waterfall is very steep. How do you handle the safety precautions for your clients? First of all, we have our equipment and then we have a little briefing that we make before we start. So we explain all security precautions, how we take security, how we go down, everything. And we try to talk to the clients to remove the stress. Then I think I am ready to go myself. Yes, yeah, so what do I need? So before we start, we have to get uh, a cube. What inspired you to start working as a professional canyon guy? I chose this work because I don't like to work in the office. 
I can't uh, stay quiet without nothing to do. And uh, I like to be in contact with people. I like sports. And you meet uh, different people. You learn with the people and the people learn with you. I love, I love adventure. Do you feel that what you make here as a guide is enough to cater for all your needs? No, <laughs> no. Because uh, for me also, I love uh, the hairdressing. Like uh, in the summer, I'm Mauritius. I work like guide and like hairdresser. And during winter season, I always spend all my winter on the cruise ship. Across the continent, there are young people who would like to be professional canyon guides like you. So what are five tips that you'd give them? The five tips is uh, to be always on time. The second thing is to be very responsible. Third thing, you need to be very honest. Fourth thing, you need to be very courageous. And the fifth thing is if you want something, you need to work for it. Nothing is impossible in the life. The Mauritian travel and tourism sector directly supported 41,500 jobs in 2017, a figure that is expected to grow to 51,000 jobs by 2028. In sub-Saharan Africa, the travel and tourism sector will account for 9.4 million jobs directly over the next 10 years. With extreme sports becoming more popular than ever the world over, it is evident that Africa can develop into the go-to destination for thrill-seeking tourists. 